Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about documentation and adding some documentation to your Power BI reports. And I'll be covering three different areas within Power BI where you can add some documentation. Okay, so documentation, really important and if you've ever tried to go and look at one of your own reports or somebody else's reports after a couple of months and you've been scratch scratching your head as to why you've actually made some certain decisions, how the data has been transformed, the logic behind some of your calculated columns or your measures, then you'll really start to know how important it is to have some clear and concise documentation. So luckily Power BI has got lots of areas where we can actually embed documentation straight into the code or straight into the actual functionality that's that's offered within the, 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 the application. So we're going to cover three areas today. We're going to look at the first one being um, Power Query and how you can actually automate your transform or document your transformations. The second is going to be in our calculated columns and measures and the third is going to be in the data modeling tab. So let's crack on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're in Power Query here and there's a few areas that we can actually add some documentation. So the first one is each one of these queries that you've got has got some properties and they've got a description here. Okay, so you can add in a description here of the data. So we can say work order data extracted from the CMMS. Okay, so you can add some data here around the data source and any any other other relevant information. Now that's going to come into play when we look at the data modeling tab as well. So that's an important area that we can use to, to capture some initial documentation related to each of the queries that we're going to use. The second place within the um, within Power Query is in the steps themselves. Okay, so the first thing here is this is a really, really straightforward transformation. We've got a source, we're navigating to a page within Excel, we're changing the data types and then we're rounding off a, a column here. You'll probably create um, transformations that have got multiple steps and that's where it becomes important. But just so you know where to put that information, I'm going to just show you here for this round off here. So there's two areas. The first one is if you right click on here, you can rename it. So you can actually change the default name which this is here okay so you can put something that's a bit more meaningful around the planned hours to two decimal places and then you can actually see each of the different steps and you can start to build up a bit of a story there okay the second place is you can add actual comments related to this um, this transformation step so we've we've got a description here of what the actual step does if you right click on here and go to properties we've got a description here Okay, so it transforms the planned hours to two decimal places. Now, what happens there is you see you've got this little information icon here. And if we hover above it, we can see that we've got a pop-up. So we could create one of those for each of the steps or each of the significant steps. And that just allows you to go through your transformation steps and really quickly understand what's happening. And if you need an extra little, um, an extra narrative, then you can see that we've got that pop-up there, which uh, supplements the description once you've added in a, a more meaningful description. So that's the, the first three places here. We've got one for the actual query itself. We've got one which can change the name of the actual step. And then we've got some additional information we can put in here to add some supplemental information related to that particular step. Okay, so the next place you can add comments is within our documentation is within your DAX code. Now, DAX code is written either in measures or calculated columns. The approach is exactly the same. So what we can do is we can add in an extra line here by holding Alt and pressing Enter. And we start off with this double forward slash. Okay, that's telling the actual um, editor that this is a comment and it shouldn't, shouldn't be considered as part of the DAX formula. So let's go and add a comment in here. Okay, so this isn't a particularly complicated piece of code here and you could probably figure it out for yourself. But I'm just explaining where you would actually and how you can actually add in this comment in this documentation. The second approach is if you want to add it to an existing line. So again, just use that double forward slash. Okay, and that just adds it to an existing line there. And you can see that it's been colored green to indicate that it's actually a comment. And then finally, if you want to add multiple rows, then you can start with a, a forward slash and a dash. Or, sorry, a forward slash and a star. 
and then enter your multiple rows here. So this is um, there's no need to start each row with this double forward slash here. The whole section is topped and tailed by this forward slash with a star, and then a star with a forward slash. Okay, so that's how you'd add comments and documentation to calculated columns and to measures. Okay, in the third place that we will add in some comments or some documentation is actually in this model view here. Okay, so if I click on the model view, I've got a tab here and it's only got the work order data table. Now if I click on that particular table, we can see it's highlighted yellow. And at the side, we've now got a list of properties here. We've got the name of the table here, but we've got this description. Now, it already has a description here, work order data extracted from the CMMS. Now, if you can remember, when we first added in some, some documentation, we added that as part of the properties when we created the query that actually builds this table. So let me just explain, well, I'll remind you where that is. So we were into this work order data, right-clicked, and added some properties and here it is here. Okay, so that's been pulled through into the actual table properties so that you can see the actual description there. So you can add it straight into here as well. There's no need to actually add it in at the actual, in, within Power Query, but that adds a little bit of a description as to what this actual data is. Now, if you then go and click on each one of these, either measures, calculated columns, or actual field or column names, then this will change to display. Let's find a backlog hours. This will change to display the properties for that particular calculated column or field or, or measure. And we can see here that you can also add a description in here. All hours on work orders which are past a target finish date. Okay, so it just adds a little bit of extra explanation as to what that particular field is or measure. So with that, it means that when you hover above here, we can see that we've got the name, which is Batlog Hours, but we also see the description below it. So if you are somebody who is actually using this data model to create visualizations, and you're, you're not really too sure what the code is, or you just want to get a quick overview of what this measure does, then this is a great place to put that so you can see it straight away, and then you know it's the, the right measure, and you can pull it straight into your visualization and, and create your dashboards. So that is the, the third place within the model tab and just add some additional descriptions that you can use just to make life a little bit easier when you're building visualizations. Okay, so there is three places that you can add additional documentation to help yourself and to also help other people that are going to be working with your report, either maintaining the code or actually building or adding to the visualizations that are already there. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, as always, it's appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and if you're finding this for the first time and want to keep up to date with the latest videos then hit that subscribe button and press the wee bell and you'll get a notification anytime I release a video which is around about once a week. Okay thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.